Hello, everyone. Thank you for taking your time to join us today for this exciting webinar being brought to you by Sentica. My name is Gabriel Escalante, and I will be your host for today's webinar. Our webinar today is titled Introducing Vilber's Product Line of Gel Imaging Systems. Today's webinar will be given by Alexis Franze, International Sales Manager at Vilber. Alexis specializes in preclinical imaging technologies, including the gel documentation, Fusion and Newton systems offered by Syntica. During this webinar, Alexis will cover the topics of gel imaging standard workflow, the difference between chemiluminescence versus fluorescence imaging, what makes the Vilber systems unique, multiplexing capabilities, and finally, an overview of image analysis. Before we begin, I would like to briefly mention a few housekeeping rules. We anticipate that today's webinar will be about 45 to 50 minutes. This should leave us some time to answer your questions at the, at the end. Please submit your questions in the Q&A dialog box throughout the presentation, and we will work through as many of the questions as we can during the hour we have together. We will create a transcript of the questions we do not answer during this session, as well as those that we may not have a chance to address. We will distrib distribute this document within the next few days. Please also note that we're recording today's session, so if for some reason you lose the connection or can't hear everything clearly, you will have access to the video file to review later. Without further ado, I'm going to pass things over to Alexis. Hi, Gabriel. Good morning. Thank you for uh, this quick introduction and thank you everyone for joining. So my name is uh, Alexi and I'm the International Sales Manager at Viber. So before we go uh, through the, the, the instruments uh, presentation, I'd like to give you some more uh, background about Wilber and um, a bit of history first. So Wilber was created in 1954 and started as a small startup company manufacturing UV instruments, such as UV cabinets, DNA crosslinkers, radiometers, as well as UV lamps. It's from the 1980s that Weber started imaging systems with the release of gel documentation systems like the dot print for DNA, RNA, and protein gel imaging. And 2002 was a transitional year for Weber, who were the first manufacturer to equip imaging systems with a fixed lens for chemiluminescence detection on Western blocks having the widest lens aperture to collect the maximum amount of light and reach unrivaled levels of sensitivity. In 2011, we started to receive some publications with images of small animals taken with our worst and blood imagers, the Fusion FX7, which was providing already great sensitivity for in vivo imaging of bioluminescent and fluorescent signals. That is how the idea of a proper instrument dedicated to small animal imaging emerged, releasing the Newton 7 Mini in 2016, which would include animal management accessories like a heated bed and nose cones being compatible with any anesthesia station. But we did not want to stop there, as we wanted to provide our customers with a system that would push the limits of 2D imagers, featuring the possibility to better understand deep tissue structures, Thus, the launch of our brand new Newton 7, which is integrated a 3D optical tomography on top of bioluminescence and fluorescence applications. Bilber is a leading life science company whose headquarters and manufacturing plants are based near Paris in France, with regional offices in Germany, China, as well as Singapore. Bilber has a presence in over 100 countries through a network of established distributors, and we have equipped more than 20,000 laboratories around the globe. Now that you have a clear picture of Bilber, let's head out to our main topic today, the Fusion FX Western Blot Imaging System. So the Fusion FX is the most performant and versatile imager on the market today, having unlimited configurations in order to detect chemiluminescence, bioluminescence, UV fluorescence, as well as visible and near infrared fluorescence on Western, Southern, Northern blots, DNA, RNA, protein gels, plants, and small animals in vivo, as well as in vitro samples in microplates or petri dishes. So, the principal fu function of the fusion effects is chemiluminescence. 
And the fusion effects has always been in the forefront of Western blot imaging, known to deliver ultimate sensitivity levels thanks to a combination of proprietary optics and lenses and a know-how of more than 50 years. Wilmer has developed the Dark9 camera, which is the latest generation of scientific CCD cameras, providing unrivaled levels of sensitivity for chemiluminescence and fluorescence applications. The Dark9 camera is a scientific 16-bit CCD camera generating up to 65,000 gray levels, and the camera is a grade zero, meaning that there won't be any dead pixels within the image. So this camera has proprietary uh, optics and uh, unrivaled specifications. So the main um, specifications that affect sensitivity is the cooling of the camera. So because cameras generate heat and heat generates noise within the image, which affects the faintest signal detection. In order to better distinguish signals from noise, the Dark9 camera is cooled to minus 90 degrees Celsius via four stages Peltier thermoelectric elements to ensure the best signal to noise ratio. So when the fusion FX is switched on, it only takes two minutes for the camera to reach the minus 90 degrees Celsius, whereas other systems would take up to five or 10 minutes before being operating. So the, the cooling is really important so that it really helps to better distinguish the fainter signals within the image without uh, saturating the brightest ones. Another criteria to consider when you are evaluating an imager is the lens aperture. The main function of a camera lens is to collect light. And the lens aperture represents its capability to collect as much light as possible in a given period. Its sensitivity is usually expressed by a range of f-stops. And the smaller the f-stop number, the larger the aperture. A lower f number denotes a greater aperture opening, which allows more light to reach the CCD sensor. So the aperture of the fusion FX lens is f slash 70 providing the best sensitivity and speed to reach the lowest limits of detection compared to other systems with smaller lens aperture. For chemiluminescence applications, the time to get the image is drastically reduced and precious substrate can be saved. And for fluorescence, ultra-sensitive detection capability facilitates the use of shorter excitation exposure, thereby reducing photo bleaching and phototoxicity and lowering dye concentrations. So the fusion FX includes ultra-low dispersion components to enhance the sensitivity and aspheric elements to deliver consistently sharp images. Another criteria is the dynamic range. So the Fusion FX camera has a dynamic range of 4.8 orders of magnitude, meaning that the very faint signals can be detected without saturating the strongest ones, ensuring a broad linearity with the capacity to quantify with confidence each and every signal within the image dynamics. So this is another um, strong specification of the Fusion camera with 4.8 optical density, where other systems are usually around 4.0 optical density, which means it is less linear and um, you will get more difficulties to detect the fainter bands without saturating the brightest ones. First of all, the Fusion benefits from an exceptional image resolution with up to 20 megapixels. So if the image resolution factor is not impacting the sensitivity, it still offers a high pixel density and more details about the sample and the signal. We have also developed a color imaging function in order to capture the colored ladder from the membrane and overlay it automatically to the signal image, offering a direct visualization on the different band concentrations. So you can see the image of your plot with the marker in color overlaid to the signal image in black and white. And this way, when you have a direct visualization of the different band concentrations. We have designed the Fusion FX in a way that we have a unique darkroom architecture, allowing the sample to be closer to the camera. Reducing the minimum working distance from the lens to the sample increases sensitivity since more light can be collected. 
So on the first level from the top inside the dark room, there is only 18 centimeter which separates the camera from the blot, enhancing the sensitivity because the light travels less distance, so more light is collected and it is more sensitive. So on the first level, you have a field of view uh, up to nine per nine centimeters, which is um, large enough for uh, mini blots. And uh, there are several levels available with an automatic recognition on the set of the sample tray. So the focus is adjusted automatically. And on lower levels, the field of view gets wider to image multiple membranes simultaneously. And the transilluminator can even be removed to image larger sample size up to 22 by 22 centimeters. So you can only play with um, the field of view according to your uh, sample size. And you can make sure that uh, the sample is fitting the field of view within the software as we have a live preview. And therefore, uh, it automatically detects the level of the sample tray and the focus is adjusted automatically. So you don't have to worry about anything. You just need to press start and the instrument will capture the image within a few seconds. After digging the many features of the fusion FX that take chemiluminescence to another level, I invite you to have a look at its outstanding fluorescence capabilities. So Wilbur has developed a unique concept of spectra capsules of light. A capsule is a powerful fluorescence exciter generating a post LED combined with primary optics and secondary optics, as well as light pass filters and narrow band pass filters in order to have a uniform illumination and increase the sensitivity of your images. So the capsules are categorized as laser class two due to their intense power. And what is fantastic with this uh, capsule concept is that you can customize your own system and you can configure the, the instrument in, um, in a way to uh, have it uh, meet with your imaging needs. So it means that inside you have a capsule holder that can welcome up to seven fluorescent capsules for multiplexing capabilities and fluorescence applications. And we offer a range of nine capsules. Uh, so you have available capsules from UV, blue, green, orange, red, near infrared, down to deep infrared. So basically from 365 nanometers to 800 nanometers, you can select the capsule of your choice that match uh, your fluorescent dyes. So it, doesn't, it means that you don't have to purchase an instrument with a mandatory set of five excitation channels. With the Fusion FX, you can select uh, the wavelengths that you need. It means that it can reduce the cost of the instrument because you won't have to purchase the complete set of fluorescent channels. You can only select one. And if your needs evil in the future, you can simply upgrade uh, by purchasing a new capsule and it's plug and play. So it's really easy to um, insert inside the system. It's automatically recognized and uh, then you can play with fluorescence applications. So it means that the Fusion FX can be uh, compatible with any dyes available on the market for fluorescence imaging from all the Alexa fluor dyes, the cyanine dyes, um, the, the GFP, CFP, YFP, RFP, M cherry, uh, IR dyes. Uh, so you, you can really have a complete set of capsules, which means your instrument will be compatible with all the dyes available on the market. And all our competitors today, they offer only six, uh, five uh, channels, excitation sources. With the Fusion FX, you can have seven uh, fluorescent channels loaded simultaneously, which means we can cover all the applications uh, that you may be interested in. Having multiple capsules within the system means you can do multiplexing acquisitions. So the multiplexing protocol allows you to uh, image a membrane probed with different dyes in order to target multiple proteins simultaneously on a single blot. So for instance, here we have a blot with IR dye 680 as well as IR dye 800. 
So there is an automatic software protocol that will capture and scan the blood using the two different wavelengths. And you result with an image overlaid with the two um, proteins so that they can be uh, differentiated in a single image. So you have access to simultaneous detection of multiple proteins with an automatic driven protocols and overlay image. This avoids the needs of stripping and reprobing. The fusion FX is also compatible with gel imaging for DNA, RNA, and protein gels. We have developed another concept, which is called pad box. So you have access to multiple pads, a UV pad, a blue light pad, or a white light pad. So depending on your needs, you can image any DNA, RNA, or even protein gels with different light sources from UV, blue light, or white light. And those transillumators are interchangeable. So it means you can have multiple transillumators um, that are automatically recognized within the instrument as well. And if you want to start with a UV fluorescent uh, transillumator, and maybe in a two years time, you want to switch to blue light because UV has its uh, drawback. And um, so you want to get rid of UV in the lab, you would have to get a safer illumination like blue light, which is also safer for the gel. You can purchase a blue light transillumator that will be compatible with your instrument. And uh, you can interchange the transillumators and they will be automatically recognized by the software. So having the choice of multiple transillumators means um, the instrument is also compatible with all the dyes available on the market for uh, gel imaging. So any UV fluorescence dyes, blue light fluorescence, such as CyberSafe, CyberGreen, CyberGold, EGFP, FITC, as well as white light visible imaging, so colorimetric stained protein gels, for instance, like Comacy Blue Gel, Red Pencil, Silver Stain, Copper Stain, or Bank Stain. You can also turn your fusion FX in an occasional in vivo imaging system for small animals, such as mice, rats, or zebra fishes, as well as a plant imager for whole plants, leaves, or seedlings. And the Fusion FX software has predefined protocols for bioluminescence and fluorescence acquisitions in vivo. So talking about the software, we have released uh, the Evolution Cat software, which is um, a license-free PC software with free upgrades for the lifetime of the instrument and unlimited number of installations. Within the Evolution Cat software, you have access to various acquisition modes from an auto mode, a manual mode, or even sequence and serial imaging. You can have image editing as well as image analysis modules. So in terms of image analysis, you have access to a quantification module, a molecular weight calculation module, distance calculation, as well as colony counting with a one-click export to Excel or a PDF. So here is a short uh, video to show you how easy it is to uh, do the molecular weight calculation. You select the lane, which is the, your marker lane. You enter the values of the marker, and all the other lanes are calculated automatically. And you can export uh, the results to an Excel spreadsheet. For, within the software, you also have access to a live 3D sample reconstruction, where you can image in live um, your gel or your blood, you have a direct visualization onto the DNA or protein quantity. So it's simply a new way to visualize your samples in 3D quantitative results. We offer also the good laboratory practice with a full GLP compliancy. It means that all the acquisition settings are recorded within the TIFF image. So whenever you want to modify the display of the image, you can always go back to the raw image data. That ensures reliability, consistency, integrity, as well as 100% reproducibility. And you can also export uh, those settings and the image into a PDF report. And choosing Viber also means hassle-free system manipulation and minimum maintenance. 
Our imaging systems are designed in a simple way without moving parts for less issues and troubles. So we have unrivaled assistance as well with a two-year standard warranty. We offer up to 10 years spare parts availability, free software upgrades for the lifetime of the instruments. Um, our distributor in North America, Cintica service engineers are also trained to operate on the instrument if you face any difficulties. We also have our own service department, which is always available if you need any help. And we have uh, integrated within the software, a quick remote support via TeamViewer. So you can set up a session with our service engineers and we can log into your PC and do a health check of the system and the software if you need to. Some other cool stuff that you won't find anywhere else. We may be um, the latest manufacturer to provide dark rooms made of stainless steel and aluminum. So it's an old metal cabinet for long time durability. When you open the door, there is a laser positioning system which simplifies blot alignment. So you don't have to waste time uh, post process to rotate the image. You make sure that your blot or your gel will be uh, straight from the start. And the door is also on an electromagnetic locking system, which prevents inadvertent door opening during the image capture. So once you launch the acquisition, um, the door is locked. You cannot open it. Uh, so it means that if you leave the lab for a few minutes and you come back, uh, no one can interrupt your uh, acquisition. So these are small details that makes the difference. So Wilbur is proud to share the following success stories. The various generations of the fusion systems has been quoted in more than a thousand publications worldwide. And we can find the fusion FX being used by prestigious Nobel Prize winners, among which Professor Yoshinori Osumi, who was Nobel Prize in Physiology 2016 for his discoveries of mechanisms for autophagy. He's also having a Fusion FX7 in his lab at the Tokyo Institute of Technology in Japan. And there is also a link of a 2019 publication, Analysis of Autophagy Activated During Changes in Carbon Source Availability in Yeast Cells, in which the Fusion FX7 is cited as well. Professor Jules Hoffman, who is Nobel Prize in Chemistry 2011 for its discoveries concerning the activation of innate immunity, is equipped with two Fusion FX7 in his lab at the CNRS in France. There is also a nice publication um, about uh, the Drosophila EYA regulates the immune response against DNA through an evolutionarily uh, conserved theronine physcotase. Fis so it's from 2012, and um, the first Fusion FX7 was installed uh, in uh, 2011. And uh, so the, 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 it is cited in this publication. And we have installed another uh, Fusion FX7 in the same lab in 2016. More recently, we have installed a Fusion FX7 uh, to Professor Avram Hershko, who is Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 2004. So it was uh, awarded jointly to Aaron Chehanover, uh, Avram Hershko, and Irvin Rose. And um, he's also been convinced to equip his lab at the Technion Institute of Technology with its, his own Fusion FX7. And even more recently, Professor Emmanuel Charpentier, who is Nobel Prize in Chemistry 2020 for the development of a method for genome editing, has lately received a brand new Fusion FX7. So there are no publications available yet citing the, the, the system as it has been installed a couple months ago. Not only Nobel Prize winners are trusting the Fusion FX for its outstanding performance and sensitivity, also pharma companies such as Pfizer, BioNTech, and their recent race to the COVID-19 vaccine. So the Fusion FX is cited in their article, BNT162B vaccines protect rhesus macaques from SARS-CoV-2, in which they reported the preclinical development of two vaccine candidates, the BNT162B1 and the BNT162B2 that contain nucleoside modified messenger RNA that encodes immunogens derived from the spike 
glycoprotein of SARS-CoV-2 formulated in lipid nanoparticles. So the part of the study involved Western blot analysis of size fractions of the medium of BNT162B1 RNA transfected cells imaged with the fusion FX. So the vaccine candidates protect macaques against challenge with SARS-CoV-2, and in particular, the BNT162B2 protects the lower respiratory tract against the presence of viral RNA and shows no evidence of disease enhancement. At the time of the article publication, both candidates were being evaluated in phase one trials in Germany and the USA, and BNT162B2 was being evaluated in the global phase two, three trial. So here is a video that summarizes everything we saw. Blue were founded in 1954. Their new fusion app. Maybe I'll have to share the sound so that you can hear it. Okay. FX Edge Western Blot Imaging System uses an all-metal cabinet for long-term durability and comes with a standard two-year warranty. It features cutting-edge optics including a custom f0.7 aperture lens and minus 55 degrees C cooling for better than film sensitivity. A visible laser positioning system simplifies blot alignment and an electromagnetic door lock prevents inadvertent opening during image capture. The FX Edge is user upgradable for up to seven color fluorescents with unique high power spectra capsules. There are capsules available from UV to deep infrared for assay flexibility. The pad box container allows a range of transilluminators to be used for gel documentation. License free PC software includes one click to the image as well as 3D dynamic scan visualization. Okay, so the fusion systems exist in various configurations, so you can select your own uh, configuration. We have either the fusion solo, which is dedicated to chemiluminescence only, it's uh, cost uh, effective, uh, very affordable, and then we have the fusion FX6. Uh, so that's the one you saw in the video. There is a cooling down to minus 55 degrees Celsius, which is already uh, deeper than other imaging systems on the market. And then you have the Fusion FX7. If you really care about sensitivity, this is our state-of-the-art uh, Western dot imaging system for chemiluminescence and fluorescence applications. So the Fusion FX systems are versatile and dedicated to chemiluminescence, uh, fluorescence on gels and worsted dots. We have also designed a range of gel documentation systems. Um, so you have access to either basic uh, gel documentation systems. So that's only for DNA, RNA, and protein gels. Those uh, gel doc systems are not compatible with chemiluminescence. So if you are interested in chemiluminescence, you'll have to go for the fusion systems. So within the gel doc range, we have basic instruments from the doc print or the bioprint, um, which are pretty affordable and very easy with a, a simple transilluminator. Or you have high hand gel doc systems with the Quantum or the Ebox CX5. Um, the Quantum and the Ebox have exactly the same specifications with a high hand camera up to 20 megapixels and the 10 position filter wheel, a sliding out translator if you need to, to, to cut the gels while the door is open. And uh, the Quantum is PC based, whereas the Ebox is standalone with an integrated PC and touchscreen. So if you're interested in uh, gel documentation only, I invite you to contact Cintica uh, directly so that they can help to, to, to configure the appropriate instrument for your needs. So that's about it for this uh, PowerPoint presentation. Um, now we can go through the audience poll. Thank you, Alexis, for the great discussion so far. We would like to ask a couple of uh, quick, po a quick poll question to learn more about you and the work that you're doing. The question is the following. Would you like us to reach out following the webinar. 
the first uh, option is yes, I would like to discuss my specific, my specific research goals in more detail, learn more about the Wilbur Fusion and gel documentation systems. Second one is yes, I would like to discuss my specific research and how gel imaging may be of benefit. Third one is yes, please send me the link to the webinar so I may share it with my colleagues that may I may find the content relevant. And the final answer is no, I was just here to learn more about the available technologies. We'll take a, we'll wait a few moments to let everyone answer the question. And just as a reminder, if you have any specific question, you can ask in the Q&A uh, section, which is down in the next to uh, polls or participants. There you can type the questions and we will try to answer them in the follow, following the, the webinar. We'll just wait a few moments. Thank you everyone for answering the poll question. Alexis will now give us an overview of the product and its software. But meanwhile, meanwhile, Alexis shows us the product. I just want to remind you everyone again, that if, if you have questions, please feel free to type them in the Q&A section. I will now, now hand over the presentation to Alexis. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, I'm gonna share my screen again so that you can access uh, software uh, and I will present you uh, the, the, the few features we offer. So I think I can do this. Okay, I hope you can see me on the webcam. Um, you can see the instrument next to me, which is uh, quite compact and space saver. So we have chosen to, to have the fusion with an external computer because with an external computer, you benefit from a much comfortable and visual display. Uh, it's easier to play with the, 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 the software instead of uh, having an integrated touchscreen that could break in the future. And if you have an instrument with a touchscreen and it breaks, you can no longer use it. Whereas if a PC breaks, you can easily replace it. So we have this uh, configuration with an external computer. And um, if I switch the camera to the system, you can have a closer look. So this is the capsule I was referring to uh, earlier on about the fluorescence illumination. So the capsules are plug and play and you can simply connect the capsule inside and it's automatically recognized by the instrument of the recent applications. So you can load a second capsule if you want to do multiplexing acquisitions. For Western blocks, we have the sample tray uh, that you can have in the door. So you can position your Western blot on top of the tray and select uh, a level depending on the, the size of your sample. And for gel imaging, you have access to this slide out translimulator with an integrated UV protection screen. If you need to excise the gel uh, on the table while the door is open, this is possible. And then you can simply push it back and close the door. So now I'm gonna share the screen of the software. So within the software, you have predefined protocols so it's very user-friendly and easy to use. Um, you can select your uh, protocol, either chemi, UV, or widescreen for protein gels. And we have various acquisition modes. So the auto mode is the one we recommend the most because there is a test image that will estimate the appropriate exposure time so that the bands are not saturated and in order also to detect the faintest uh, bands located on the membrane. So this is really um, the best uh, acquisition mode to use, the auto mode, but you can also have the manual mode. So here you can select 
um, the number of minutes or seconds. Uh, you can adjust everything. So you can image up to two hours if you want to. And the serial mode allows you to do sequence imaging with accumulation or incrementation or repetitive accumulation uh, images. So um, it's up to you to use uh, the, the, the acquisition mode that best suits your needs. You also have a live preview that uh, you can click so that you can see your sample. And um, once the image is taken, so you can see here we have an overlay of colored blood marker with the signal image. So you can navigate from the signal image only. So that is your Western blot. So that is using the, the auto mode. And you can see the image dynamic here. We have captured 64,000 gray levels, which means there is no saturation in this image. And we have captured the maximum amount of information and quantitative data within the image without any saturation. So you can see your blot in three dimension. So this way you have a direct visualization on the different bands concentration. And then you can also see your marker image only, which is in color, and then the overlay image of the marker and the signal. If you want to look at a gel, um, here you can see we have some saturation. It's okay for the gel because what we want to do is to see the bands. So uh, sometimes we can push the, the exposure time and uh, in order to detect the, the, the other bands. So we have a, a saturation button that will indicate whether you have saturated uh, saturation within your image. But here, I already have an indication because I have a red bar and I know that I have reached the 65,000 gray level. So there should be uh, some saturated bands. So if I click saturation, yeah, I can see those ones in red. So if you zoom within your image, you can have a closer look at your gel. And indeed, we have a bit of saturation, but it's fine because at least I can see the fainter bands. So you can also see your gel in three dimension, and you can see those ones with um, the flat red here means that the, there should be uh, some saturation. You can also image colonies uh, like that. So for instance, uh, this is a GFP colony. So it's very easy to define. And again, when you activate the 3D, you can see which colonies are emitting uh, stronger intensities than others. So the, the 3D features is very nice so that you have a direct visualization to different intensities within the sample. Uh, I told you we can use the instrument for uh, occasional uh, small animal imaging. So here, for instance, we have zebra fishes with um, M-cherry. So again, if you activate the, the, the 3D, you can see which fish has uh, most uh, intensities. So this is in vivo imaging. The fish were maintained anesthetized in a small gel. And um, here we have the in vivo imaging of small animals as well. So you can have um, a heated bed as well with the fusion FX, which you can connect to an anesthesia station outside uh, the instrument in order to perform a small animal imaging. So if you look at the signal display, we can increase the display, for instance, go back to the overlay. And you can see that the mice have been uh, taken using the, the colored image function. So this is very nice uh, if you want to see your animals in colors like that. And the uh, last uh, sample I wanted to show you today is uh, also plant imaging. So you can image whole plants or leaves or seedlings. So for instance, here we have the, the photograph image only in which uh, you can see uh, the, the detour of where the signal is supposed to be. So this is a, a leaf with uh, bioluminescence inside. So we can detect the signal inside the leaf as well. 
So you have a direct analysis uh, function here in which you can select either quantification, molecular weight calculation. You can also uh, choose a distance calculation or colony counting. And in the edit mode, uh, you have um, the possibility to insert some text, to crop the image, to rotate it, to merge, paste a marker, to subtract some background, do some correction, multiplexing, overlay, etc. So you have a multitude of uh, features available. This software is license free. Uh, you can install it on any computer, any PC. So if you want to do the acquisition on the main uh, unit, you can retrieve the images on a USB key or on the local network and go back to your office and analyze the images on your own laptop, for instance. Um, there is no limitations in the number of installation. You can even uh, download the software from our website if you want to have a, a look at it. Uh, that's possible. So all the images we produce are saved within a TIFF uh, file, which is a 16-bit TIFF image. Um, we have the GLP here, which uh, gives you all the acquisition settings and uh, the, the, the protocol you have used to, to, to capture that image. And whenever you modify the display of the image, it means you can always go back to the raw image data. And then you have some copy function that where you can paste the image in another program, or you can compare uh, multiple uh, images uh, side by side very quickly. All right, so uh, I think we have seen pretty much uh, everything about the software. You can see it is really easy to use. Uh, if you click on more in the protocol section, you have the default uh, protocols, but you can use one profile and edit it with your own settings as well. So our profiles are not set in stone. You can always change or modify, but never erase or replace a default program. So you can create a new profile based on the, the default one with your own settings if you need an acquisition with exactly the, the, the same um, acquisition uh, settings you can do that and uh, you can do as many things as you need within the software okay so i think uh, we've seen the the software and uh, now, if you have any questions left, I'm happy to, to answer. Yeah, thank you very much, Alexis, for the demonstration you gave us of the system. Uh, as, as Alexis mentioned, we will now move on to the live Q&A section. And the first question that we have is, for DNA gel detection, does Fusion detect SYBR safe? Does a blue pad have to be uh, purchased separately? So um, CyberSafe uh, is a dye that has two excitation peaks, one in the UV and one in the blue light spectrum. So it's um, up to you to opt for either uh, a UV transluminator or a blue light transluminator. Um, usually the UV light will have an, uh, a stronger sensitivity and less background. Uh, rather than blue light, but blue light is um, safer on the, on the other hand. It's, it's safer than UV because uh, the UV light can damage the gel. It nicks the DNA uh, if it is exposed for too long, whereas the blue light is safer and blue light is also safer for the user. The, the, the UV light is very uh, dangerous for the user because it can burn the eyes and the skin, whereas blue light will be much safer in this way. So um, if you want to image CyberSafe in a gel uh, or CyberGreen, um, you can choose either UV or blue. It's uh, really up to you. Both will work. If you have a, a UV transluminator, uh, you, you can do it with the UV transluminator and uh, you don't need the blue light or the other way around works as well. Okay, thank you very much for, the, for answering the question, Alexis. The second one is for WB detection, does fusion detect blotted membranes through chemiluminescence or it is only meant for gels? If so, is it capable also to take pictures through visible spectrum just to have a picture of the protein ladder? Yeah, so um, that's uh, exactly what I showed uh, within the software, the image of the Western blood. So it captures Western blood 
using chemiluminescence. And uh, you can also capture uh, through fluorescence in the, in the visible and the near infrared spectrum. And you can also capture colorimetric uh, worsted blots, uh, which are already uh, visible on the membrane using the, the colored imaging function. So um, if you look at, uh, or if you remember the, the, the image of the blot I showed in the software, you could see the, the image of the marker in color. Uh, so that is similar to a colorimetric worsted blot, but you can also use the chemiluminescence, which is the main function of the fusion FX. Okay, thank you very much, Alexis. Very insightful response. So the next question is, how does your system compare to Perkin Elmer IVIS spectrum unit? So that's a, a good question. Um, the fusion FX has to be used for, uh, so the, the, the IVIS uh, spectrum from Perkin Elmer is a small animal imaging system only. Uh, the fusion FX is multimodal in a way that it's mostly dedicated to Western blood and gel with occasional uh, in vivo uh, applications. But if you are only interested in small animal imaging, we have another range of uh, systems called the Newton 7, uh, which uh, compare very well to the, the Perkin and Mer instruments. Hey, thank and you I'm very sure much. Oh, sorry, apologies. No, no, uh, I, I think um, uh, we have uh, Katie here as well from Cintica who can help. Uh, we can help with the, the, the comparison against our Newton 7 to the Perkin Elmer uh, if you need any information. Absolutely. I was going to add, uh, Anthony, I'll also have Katie follow up with you from Syndica um, as she uh, she's our optical expert and did her PhD on the IVIS system. So she can give you a great sense of how the two systems would compare for animal imaging. Okay, so... Uh, we have time to answer one more question, and the question is, can you explain the options for chemiluminescence in regards to stacked or accumulative exposure in more detail? Yes, sure. So um, the serial imaging mode allows you to, um, to select a number of images you want to see. So first you select well, Either you want to see five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 images, for instance, and you can choose an accumulation mode uh, that is taking into, con into consideration the previous image. Uh, and at the end, you can either see the, the images individually or stacked. It means stacked that um, the, 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 the signal intensities from the previous image has been accumulated accumulated to the, the, the new image. So if you want to see 10 images accumulated, you can do that. Uh, that's not possible. You can also select to visualize them individually. So this is the accumulation mode. And we also have a, a repetitive mode in which you can select the, 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 the exposure time you want uh, for each image and uh, the, the program will launch automatically so that each image has exactly the same uh, exposure. Um, and you can see this way the evolution and the kinetics of the signal over time. Okay, thank you very much, Alexis. We have reached the end of, uh, for our session today. And to be respectful of everyone's time, we're going to wrap things up. As mentioned at the start of our webinar, we will be sure to answer any questions in the written transcript, and we'll work to get this out to you over the next few days. I would like to thank Alexis for the wonderful presentation today. I trust that we have been able to provide you with some relevant information about the product line of gel imaging systems offered by Vilver. If in the days and weeks to come, you have further questions about the modalities discussed today, I encourage you to reach out to us here at Syndica, and we'll be happy to discuss further. We will welcome the opportunity to discuss your specific research goals and how any of our systems could help move your work forward. Thanks again to all of you for taking time out of your day to attend our session, and we look forward to seeing you at a future Syndica event. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.